Hey guys, FJH here, and today I'm going to show you guys how I tether to my iPad using Evoto AI. If you don't know what Evoto AI is, you definitely need to check them out because it's essentially a program that allows me to get my life back. Instead of doing manual retouching all the time for excellent results, I can now use Evoto AI to get those high-end retouching results very, very quickly. And it works so well that I've actually stopped manual retouching altogether, so I don't even do that anymore. I just use Photoshop and other things to do a little bit more of the creative final touches to my photos. I've actually made a couple of different videos going over the features that I use in Evoto AI, and you guys definitely need to check out those videos. But this video is going to be how I tether to my iPad using Evoto AI. And it's such a simple process that I might actually start tethering to my iPad at photo shoots outdoors on location because I think the bigger display is going to be beneficial for me to see the photos with more detail. And also seeing the retouching in real time on location is also going to be very, very cool. So let's just jump right into this tutorial. You will need a couple of different things that are very crucial to this tutorial, like the camera and the lens, for example, but you will need some other stuff as well. And I've actually showed you guys during this whole part in this intro of this video, the things that you'll need. So you need the camera, the lens, an off camera flash and a transmitter in case you want to use off camera flash. You will need a tethering cord, which I have right here that I've used at my different presentations and live demos at different conferences, which so that's why it's a big one, even though I don't need a long cord right now for this demo. And then I have the iPad Pro right here. You're also going to need a Voto AI downloaded and installed on your iPad. And I think the last thing that you'll need is just somebody to take photos of. I'm not going to be taking self portraits today for this video. So I am going to get my wife Ashley in here in a second to have somebody to take photos of. Now that Ashley's here, I'm going to show you guys how to tether to the iPad step by step. So it's very simple. I have my camera here, my Sony a7R 3 with the Viltrox 35 1.2 and I have that on already. So that's already on and I do have my tethering cord here and I have my iPad with Evoto AI running already. So now all I need to do is just connect the tethering cord from the camera to the iPad. I actually do have a very long tethering cord because I use this when I'm doing a presentation at a photo conference or something, but you guys could definitely use a much smaller tethering cord in case you guys are doing a quick demo like this very close to the subject. Now that I have the camera and the iPad connected, I will start taking pictures of Ashley in a quick second. But basically all you have to do is from the homepage on Evoto AI in the app, all you need to do is click on create new project. And then from there, you can see it says tethered shooting and click on that. And then the last thing you need to do is just name that project that you're gonna be doing for the tethered shoot. And in this case, I'll probably name it Ashley tethering. And then I'll just keep it like that. You can actually see all the camera settings that I'm using right now, as well as my battery percentage and the camera that I'm using on this app right now. So you guys can see all that information in case you guys are very interested in how I'm shooting Ashley right now. I do have the iPad a little bit away from me so I can do a little bit more free range shooting right here. But you guys are going to see exactly what I'm seeing on the iPad anyway as I'm shooting. I'm trying to position myself so that those lights behind her aren't really showing, but I'm going to take one quick shot. One, two, and three. <laughs> And then the picture is going to show up on the iPad, which is showing right now. This first shot here is basically the shot that you're going to do the retouching to in case you guys are interested in, in any sort of retouching as you're taking the shots. And basically, once you apply the retouching to this first photo, you can actually enable it so that the next shots that you're going to take are going to have those same retouching different things that you want on the photo applied to the next series of photos. So it's very cool in that aspect. I actually use this feature of my sister, who's very, very picky. She wants different things done to her face when I'm taking pictures of her. So I use the photo AI tethering for whenever I shoot with my sister. Basically right now, I just need to see exactly what I want to retouch on this photo. And there's a couple different things that I can do. So I'll show you guys exactly what those are going to be. I'm going to click on the little face icon on the right side of the app. That's going to be portrait retouching. And that's going to allow me to do a lot of different things that I'll show you guys right now. You can see on the top that is at 40.6%. So it's not 100%. So I am going to go and pinch on the image and then it's going to go more than 100%, but that's totally fine. I kind of want to just see exactly a close up of all the different things that I'm going to apply. So I'm going to just zoom out just a little bit and then pretty much just see what exactly I want to do to this photo. I am going to apply the freckles and acne. You have like a small little thing right there on the bottom of your chin. So I'm just doing her a favor right there. There are glasses glare, but before I do the glasses glare removal, I'm going to do, let's say for example, her face was very shiny. I can do a reduced face shine and all I did is just kind of reduce the little highlight on your nose. I'm going to do a little bit of the dark circles, maybe a little bit more. I'll do a little bit of the eye bag, a little bit less maybe because it's not, it's a little too extreme there. So I'll do like 40 or yeah, 40. I'm going to do the limp wrinkles and flakes that made everything very perfect right there dehydrated, <laughs> dehydrated. <laughs> depending on the subject you might want to apply double chin but in this case i don't need to do that and i've actually seen that sometimes it's just better to just leave the the chin the double chin there if there is one because sometimes it might remove like a highlight or something. So it just depends on the image. I could also do forward wrinkles. I think there's a small little bit of lines right there in the top. I'm just going to put it to 100%. 
that's pretty much all the stuff I want to remove to the face, but now let's go into the retouching section. So I'm going to just minimize the blemish removal section and then go to skin retouching. I think for our case, the skin is fairly even, so I don't really need to apply the even dodge and burn section. I do want to add the sculpt dodge and burn section because I really like how it defines the face a bit. So I'm going to go to 100 and if it looks too crazy, then I'll reduce it. But let's see how 100 looks like. It did give the face a good amount of definition. So I just want to kind of see how I feel about it. But I think 100 is like a tad bit too strong for me. So I'll probably go to something like 60 66 execute order 66 for all the nerds out there and i zoomed out a little bit on the image so i can see a little bit more of like the full scale entire image i think the last two things i'm going to do is i think neck wrinkles is something i'm going to also apply which i believe is in the blemish removal section yep under body refinement i'm going to click on our slide the neck wrinkles section yeah it got your scar a little bit too so again you know in case she was self-conscious about her scar it can you know it can help with that and I was about to zoom out again, but one thing you can do is actually tap the percentage on the top there. So I'm gonna tap on that and then click on fit so I can see the entire image right there. Now I'm gonna exit blemish removal again. And then I think I am gonna remove the straight hairs that I'm seeing. So I'm gonna click on hair and then I'm gonna go to hair part line. Let's say for example, this is a, a very true case with some clients that you might work with. They might have a little bit less hair in the hair part line. So you can actually help reduce that. I'm not saying that she has that a lot. I'm just saying that you could kind of help any sort of client that you might have that solo self conscious about that that is about 59 percent i'm gonna probably drop it to like 40 and then the last thing i'm gonna do is just remove the straight hair so i'm gonna click on that and put it all the way to 100 and you can see that it did a pretty good job at removing those straight hairs i'm gonna click on the percentage again and click on fit and then i think the very last thing i want to do to this image is just remove the glare on the glasses i probably should have done this earlier when i was already in the blemish removal section but now i just opened it up again and then right under where the lower eyelid section is you can see where it says remove glasses glare so i'm gonna zoom in on the glasses and then i'm gonna go ahead and just print it to 100% and you can see that it did a very very good job at removing those glares the different glares in the glasses and actually I did lie I do want to do one last thing which is actually remove a little bit of the wrinkles on the clothing so I'm going to click on the clothing section clothing and accessories adjustments section and then I'm going to go to de-wrinkle clothing and enable that all the way to 100 and you can see that it did a great job at reducing those wrinkles on the shirt I think now I'm actually perfectly fine with the image so now I'm going to go back to the tether and shooting section so you can see all the different settings so I will take just a couple of different images and have Ashley take some pictures of me. But one thing that you will need to think of ahead of time is that right now I do have these adjustments on a female. And if I take pictures of myself, if she takes pictures of me, then it's not gonna apply those settings because it's not a female. So in case you guys want to do any sort of retouching, if you're changing from a girl to a guy and you're expecting any sort of retouching to be applied to the guy as well, just kind of anticipate that it's not gonna do that. If you change it from a guy to a girl, then you will have to do a little bit more of the retouching for that guy because more often than not you won't do the same amount of retouching to a guy as you would to a girl so let's just take a couple more photos that first shot was fine but let's just take a couple more <laughs> okay one two three and it did just apply those different settings that I already enabled on that first image to the second image. So I'll probably just take like maybe two more and then see how that looks like. So let's just take one more and then we'll let the uh, iPad do all the retouching to that photo. And again, it applied all those different settings to this shot. And I think we'll just take one more. I'm just trying to think if I want to do a different angle or not. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to a little bit to that side. Yeah, like that. Like that. Perfect. So I accidentally shot two photos there. So they're just going to go ahead and just apply those retouching things that I did to those two shots. That's pretty much it for this whole tethered shooting part of this video. So I'll let Ashley go back to do whatever, whatever he was doing. I'll let her do that. Watching a show, reading a book, whatever it might be. One thing I forgot to mention is that it is a credit based system on Evoto AI. So in case you guys want to retouch an image and then export it, that will use one credit. But I think this is a great thing in the sense that you can do a photo shoot with like a hundred images in that case with my sister that I've shot before in the studio. I took so many photos of her and she wanted to see every single photo retouched as I was taking the shots. And it wasn't until I exported a single image did a credit get used. So that was perfect for shooting with someone like my sister so she could see all the retouching. But again, I wasn't wasting the credit each time I took a photo. And that's pretty much how I tethered to my iPad using Evoto AI. If you guys are interested in trying Evoto AI yourself, there will be a link as well as a discount code in the description area below so you guys can get up to 20% off Evoto 
Evoto AI. One last thing that I wanted to mention is that Evoto AI is launching brand new features and a brand new product on September 16th. They're going to be doing a huge event in New York and they're going to be live streaming that event. So in case you guys want to see what the new product is, what the new features are, you can actually register for the live stream using the link that's going to be in the description area below, as well as in the pinned comment. I am actually going to be attending the event in person. So in case you guys want to register for the live stream and if you guys see me and if there's a comment section, then you can say like, hi, FJH or something like that. Or maybe I'll just say hi to the camera if I see it passing me. But yeah, register for the live stream. I definitely recommend you guys do that so you guys can see all the new stuff. But that's it for this video. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the very next video.